I'm Jeannie Wood, Executive Director of the Community Asian Theater of the Sierra, also known as CATS. Many of you are probably familiar with CATS as being one of the theater companies that produce theater at the Nevada Theater in Nevada City. As you know, for the past two years, we've been dark because of the pandemic. However, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Next year in 2022, in April and May, we will finally be producing The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tang. We're just so happy that we're finally gonna be producing this show. Oops. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but in the meantime, um, we are gradually emerging from the dark and cats will be producing a series of uh, cultural enrichment programs this uh, spring and this summer. And we're happy to start with Cats Can Cook uh, with Lisa Moon today. Welcome, Lisa. She's my good friend. And we've been together for, oh my God, 20 some odd years with Cats. You know? Thanks, Katie. Yeah, we're so glad that she's going to be sharing her culinary talents with us. So um, Lisa is the artistic director of Cats, and she is also an actor. And she'll be in the Jolla Club next year as one of the four mothers. She'll be a great mother. <laughs> so um, she is a retired optometrist. And in her spare time now, she babysits her granddaughters. Uh, <laughs> I was she, testing my timers. She's, anyway, she babysits her granddaughters. Uh, Lily and Zoe, who are the children of um, Grant and Allison. And, um, and she loves to continue to bake and cook for her family. Now, if you haven't already downloaded recipes uh, from our website, they are available at catsweb.org. And we will be having a question and answer period today at the end. And you can uh, send your questions in through the chat feature on Zoom. Um, let's see. Oh, our virtual programs are free, but if you would like to make a donation to support CATS, we would really appreciate that. And again, you can do that at catsweb.org. So I want to thank you very much. I'm going to turn the program over to Lisa, and I'll be back later to wrap up. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie, for your kind words. Welcome, my friends. And Jeannie, thank you for letting us use your beautiful kitchen that was designed by her daughter, Kim Wood. Just lovely, thank you. So what I'll be demonstrating today are three different items. And the first one will be egg, steamed Chinese egg custard. Then we will move on to a fish, spinach and rice dish that you can prepare ahead of time. And life is short, so I think we should start with dessert first. What we're going to do is make a Chinese mule sponge cake. It's called Malai Gai, I'm sorry, Malai Go. Um, if you don't speak Chinese, I just say cake and chicken at the same time. Oh. So what we're doing is, you can follow along with the recipe or I will talk you through it. What we have is, I started with three eggs along with a fourth cup of unflavored vegetable oil, then one cup of light, lightly packed brown sugar, and you beat it for five minutes. I did that so you won't hear the beater going like this. For five minutes. And you wanna combine it until it's light and fluffy. And then we're adding vanilla extract, a third of a cup of evaporated milk, and one and a half tablespoons of instant vanilla pudding mix, or if you have custard mix, that's even better. And just combine. Mm. 
Next, we're adding the cake flour, which I have incorporated um, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and three tablespoons of baking powder. If you don't have cake flour, don't worry. You can use do the same thing with all-purpose flour. One take one cup of all-purpose flour, remove two tablespoons, and then replace that with two tablespoons of baking powder, and you've got your own cake flour. So let's include this. And just gently mix this. Don't do what I did one time. I was in a hurry, so I put this on high. <laughs> right after I added the cake flour, and guess what? Poof, all over the kitchen. Don't do that. So here we go. Just lightly combine, and you don't want to overwork your batter. There you go. And once it's combined, you let this sit for 30 minutes so that the baking powder can start doing its work and forming bubbles. So let's set this aside. And while we're waiting for that, 30 minutes is a long time. So I wanted to show you what I have here. This is a batter that I started earlier and it has, see all the bubbles in there? That's what we're looking for. So this is after 30 minutes. Then we can get it ready to bake. And I have some setups here. You can use a Chinese steamer. And I put some Pam in here so that the cake won't stick. You can use butter and fl or flour. Or if you don't have a steamer with parchment paper, you can also use a standard cake pan. Or I wanted to test this out, but I wanted my cake to be higher. So I used a smaller diameter uh, cake pan. But today we're going to do it in the steamer. So here is the batter. After having rested for 30 minutes, I'm giving it a light stir and pouring it into my cake pan. You can put it into a cake pan or you can put it into ramekins, custard cups, anything that is heat proof. And you'll notice that this batter has gotten a little stiffer also. So there we go. And since we disturb the bubbles, we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes before we put it in the steamer. And while we're waiting for the 10 minutes for the, the bubbles to appear again, let us start on our eggs. Here we go. a two cup measuring cup and we're cracking four eggs into this. whip this up. 
And I don't know if you noticed, but I dropped an eggshell in here too. But no worries, we'll catch that on before we cook it. Scrambling this up so it's nice and smooth. And then we're going to measure this. And we're adding some liquid to this. So we have, it looks like one cup of egg. So we need to add one cup or a little bit more of a liquid. So you can add water if you like, and don't use tap water because it has too many bubbles. So I like to use chicken broth, which has really nice flavor. So with one cup of egg, we're putting in one cup of broth. There you go. The more liquid you have, the more on that ratio, the, the silkier your eggs will be. If you have less liquid, then it will be firmer. I personally like to have it more liquid and silky. So let's add just a touch more. Here we go. Now let's put the mesh. Need to use a mesh strainer and make sure that you have a heat proof dish. So we are pouring the egg mixture and this will catch any egg solids. Like, a, oh, there's that shell, it's right on the top there. And um, the egg solids and bubbles. And if you like things saltier, then you can add just a pinch of salt. And we are going to cover this with foil or plastic wrap. And this is to keep any of the liquid that might be on the top on the lid of your steamer from dropping onto your eggs. That would make your eggs kind of dimpled in spots. And the, the idea is to keep your eggs looking really smooth. So this is now going to go into the steamer. So come with me. I have a steamer going here and here is the rack that keeps the pan from or the like, dish from touching the water. So here we go. Just setting it right in here. Lid goes on and we're cooking the four eggs for let's put it down at 12 minutes. So here's another timer. All right. And while the eggs are cooking, let's start on the fish. We can, oh, we can put the cake on now too. Oh, let me just show you this before we put that in. Look at the bubbles that have come back on the cake. There you go. So now this is going into the steamer.
then the cake is going to cook for 30 minutes. Well, steam for 30 minutes. Okay, let's work on the fish. Oh, we can't forget this. Green onions and cilantro. <laughs> You know how when you buy some cilantro and green onions at the store, you bring it home in a plastic bag, use a little bit for whatever you're making, and then you toss it in the refrigerator. Then when you want to use it again, you look at it and it doesn't look so good. The cilantro kind of gets gooey and gummy and the green onions get all wilted. Well, look at what I've done here. We have, when I got home from the store with my green onions and cilantro, I washed it, shook off the extra water, and I put it into a tall cup or a jar, filled it up with water, and then I had a plastic bag over this and a rubber band holding it down, and I put this in the refrigerator, and it will look good for two to three weeks. So give that a try. So today I'm going to show you what I do with the green onions. I'm not going to do it with um, cleaver or a sharp knife. I'm actually cutting this with my trusty Chinese scissors. So we cut off the ends. There's actually a bag here, so I'm not just dropping it on the floor. All right, here we go. Just fold it, cut it, and here you go. This is a really simple, quick way to get your green onions or your chives or any of your other herbs. If you don't like the whiter parts of the green onions, you don't need to use it. Truth is, I am not a great cook. I like to read and experiment. So I like to read recipes and then I try it out on my family and, <laughs> and our staff. And they seem to appreciate that and my friends. So, and same thing with the cilantro, cut off the ends. Fold it. Ooh. All right, let's do the fish. You need a heat proof microwavable pot. And you start with pre-washed packaged spinach. This is a dish that you can make ahead of time. It's really simple. So, and we got the spinach. And I use leftover brown rice pre-cooked. I had this, so I thought, let's just use this. And what's great about this is that it, the rice holds down the spinach. And we add the green onions and cilantro. And here I have four fish fillets. And I am using swai, which is a very mild white fish. Put the thicker parts towards the edge. And you can curl the tail part under. I like using swai. It's really mild and it's inexpensive. 
and it doesn't overcook. It stays moist. There we go. And we're going to season this with ground garlic. garlic powder, ground ginger, soy sauce, touch, just a touch of soy sauce, and I like sesame oil. And fish sauce. Fish sauce just gives it more flavor. If you don't have fish sauce, again, no worries. You can make your own fish sauce, which is using one tablespoon of soy sauce and one anchovy filet minced. And then you've got your fish sauce. Here, we've got this. What's nice about this dish is when it's cooking, the juices from the fish and the cilantro, the spinach, everything just soaks down into the rice that's on the bottom and it's just delicious. Okay, so we have spinach and more spinach. Spinach is so good for you. And squish it down and let's put a lid on this. And to keep it tight, this is my husband's invention, a rubber band around the lid. And this goes into the microwave for 15 minutes. on it and this is used where you take it out and you slice it either into little rounds or on a diagonal. I don't like to take the time to do that so I buy the, the pre-chopped lop churum and this is what it looks like like this. Some people put other things into their eggs such as minced, a can of minced clams or they can have some chi dried Chinese shrimps. You can get all these at the ch Chinese food stores. So on the 
lop churum, I'm going to saute this along with some green onions so that you won't get that sharp flavor from the green onions. Well, before I do that, I want to show you this. If you want to make your green onions look pretty, you can also do this. And what I did was I just cut the green onions and put little strips in them. Same thing with the, the white part, or it just makes some really nice little curls. Okay, let's go. Let's go heat up the lap churum. Take a look at these eggs. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just jiggling like jello. You can add your soy sauce, chives, sesame oil. I'm sauteing the lobster on the green onions. I want to show you this. I started another cake. And this one's gonna be a little bit higher because I'm in, in a smaller diameter container. So let's put this in the steamer also. Here is the lapturum sizzling with the green onion. Just layering this on top of my egg. And since I'm using Jeannie's kitchen in her pan, Jeannie, don't wash this pan because it's got all the fats from the lapturum. And it, if you fry an egg in it tomorrow morning, boom, it's going to be good. <laughs> And I'd like to thank all the people that have helped me test this recipe out. Carol Young's friends from the Bay Area, from the Alameda and Oakland area. My friend, Marianne, who has made these, the eggs for her family. She suggested I put sesame seeds on it, which I think is lovely. And let's check the fish. Do you remember how full this was? Look at this. Spinach wilts down. And we can test it for the fish for doneness by giving it a little poke. And if it flakes, it's done. Yes, this is done. Look at that, it's flaky. All right. So the next question is, who's hungry? And let's pleat this. Let me show you the eggs. It's really silky. Can you see that? It is silky and smooth. And the fish, it's layered kind of like lasagna. So we have, we have the spinach on the bottom, then the layer of rice, then the fish, more spinach, and the cilantro, and here we go. Look at this. It's really, really hot. Wow. Let's move this 
here so you can look at this. And since you're not here to share this with me, I am going to give it a little taste. This is the eggs. It's hot. Mmm, it's really good. It's very, very smooth. Mmm, that lap churn is good. And we have fish. Really tasty. And the rice. Mmm. I wish you were here to join me, then we can, there's plenty of food here. So you would use as many fillets, uh, fish fillets as you have for your family members. So it'd be like one fillet per person. Okay, that means the cake is ready. Let's go check it. Again, carefully lifting the lid. Oh, look at the cake. It's wow. Here comes the cake. Look at this. It's steaming. It's hot. It looks really fluffy. And that's pretty hot. Let's see, does my camera crew want anything to eat? <laughs> Here's a plate. Here, you take this over here and let's, there you go. Okay, let's take the cake out of the steamer. Ooh. Look at this cake. Look at this cake. It's spongy. It's light. Oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really mm. it looks good. delicious. <laughs> wow, it really does look yummy, Lisa. So now we're going to take questions. I oh, there's a question about where to buy ingredients, Lisa. So where do you suggest we get ingredients? You can you buy them. Ingredients at any Asian market. There's uh, several Asian markets in Sacramento, one on Florin, one on Broadway. Um, I understand there's an Asian market in Roseville also, but you know what? You can also get it locally. Not the lot term, but the soy sauce, the fish sauce, the sesame oil, garlic powder, and the ginger. I got those at our local supermarket. What about the swai? I know, long term, you can get this at the Asian markets, or <laughs> actually I was really surprised because our camera director, David Wong, told me he got these from Costco. Costco yeah. <laughs> by the airport in San Francisco. Costco. Oh. There we go. <laughs> now this one that's all topped up, I got this in San Francisco in um, a supermarket, Chinese supermarket, and they're usually in the refrigerated areas. So these freeze well too, so you can keep them for a long time, but they're delicious. And something that, let me tell you about this moule cake. It is considered from CNN, it is Hong Kong's national cake. And it's a favorite cake in Hong Kong. It's not that sweet, but it's very light and fluffy, a little bit chewy. It's my daughter Allison's favorite dim sum dessert. If you don't know what dim sum is, let me tell you. Dim sum means touch of the heart. And there are restaurants in the Bay Area, and there might still be some in Sacramento, but I'm not sure if that's still available. And what they do is they have you go in there, you take a seat at a table, and there are ladies pushing these carts 
filled with food in little tiny bamboo steamers or plates. And they are shouting out what their food is. Like, hagao, that means shrimp balls. Seal my beef dumplings. Hansai gok, which is fried dumpling that's savory. Or let's see, we have la mai gai, which is sticky rice with chicken and probably some lop churn wrapped up in a lotus leaf and steamed. Steam. They have so have many so different, different things. things. So and you, you can, can go, go if you see seafood here, here or see any, seafood. something you like, just uh, raise your hand and they'll come over and put it on your, um, put it on, on your table. Okay, we have, so, uh, okay. just uh, one more thing. Okay, yes. Just, um, that's the way it used to be in the traditional dim sum restaurants. But now that things are a little bit different, I think what you might happen is you go into the restaurant and they'll give you a menu and you check off what you want to eat. They'll take that into the kitchen and steam it up. So looks like there might be some more questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Right, okay. Can you layer the fish fillets when cooking them? Or is it best to cook them one layer at a time? Oh, what I did was I thought it was, I started out, I, I put everything together. It's like a lasagna, you want to layer it and then cook it so all the flavors mesh. Well, same thing with the, with the fish. I started out with spinach and then the rice, then the fish, the seasoned beans, the green onion, cilantro, and more spinach. And then you cover it and steam it, or you, actually you can steam it if you don't want to use your microwave. But it would, I think the microwave is easy. I mean, look, you do it the day before, you can put it in the refrigerator. So when you come home and you're hungry, you've picked up the kids from their sports and you don't want to have to get dinner started, you just take this out of the refrigerator, put it into the microwave for 15 minutes and dinner is ready. Okay, we have another question. What other types of fish work well for this dish? You can use, um, I use fly for this, but you can use tilapia. Any white fish that is your favorite will do. Use um, cod, flounder, petroli sole. I haven't tried it with salmon but I bet that would be really good too. Okay, we have a question about where can we get the recipes? Yes, they are on the CATS website at catsweb.org. So go to our website, they should be there. Okay, um, where to get swai? Somebody wants to know where oh. to get swai. <laughs> swai, if you can get it. Well, it's wherever you can get frozen fish at the supermarkets. I have seen it at Grocery Outlet and also at Save Mart. Those are the stores that I frequent because it's close to where I live. It's, they're frozen um, and they are all vacuum packed. Swai comes from um, a swai farm. It's farmed in Vietnam. And if you're worried about Vietnam and cleanliness, you don't need to worry. Some of the packs have been certified as being safe. safe. So give Swai a try. It's really mild and just delicious. Do we have any other questions? I'm not. There is one. There is one. Where is it? Oh, oh I'm at the bottom. Scroll down. I am. Uh, uh, I'm scrolling. Getting there. Uh, can can you put two layers of fish on the rice? or does it have to be one layer of fish? Well, you can try it two layers, but I think the fish won't get done. So I would, I would keep them separate. And another thing you can do is if you take the fish, you can roll it and then place it. When I bought tilapia to try, I was really surprised because the swai I was using, you saw how big they were. They were about this big. I've seen the swai in the freezer department and they're like this big. But when I bought a bag of tilapia, the fish were really tiny. They were maybe about this big each. So I just rolled them so that they would definitely wouldn't overcook. 
Okay, Lisa, I'm hungry. <laughs> well, Jeannie, what are you going to feed me? Well, I have. Can we have cake, cake first? <laughs> sure. Life is short. Have dessert Life first. There you go. Okay, yummy. Oh take my goodness, I'm going to take a bite. Wow. Uh, mm, yummy. Yes. Good job. It's really fluffy. It is, yeah. I love it. Good job. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank we thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions and if you want to see more shows like this or if you have suggestions for other meals, please let us know. And if you have tried any of my recipes, I would really love to hear how you did with them and whether you enjoyed it. Thank you, my friends.